So, I mean, the, the Chamber, I guess, has been doing what, what I've been saying this for a few weeks now. We're doing a lot of connecting with government and just making sure that we're listening to what business is going through at the moment and feeding all of that back. Um, and we're definitely seeing the government changing some of their responses when they're hearing. So, you know, there's been gaps in some of the business support and the government have been brilliant at responding to that and changing some of the, their guidelines and their rules and their business support. So um, that'd be one thing I would say, you know, please, please, please tell us if there's anything at all that you're finding that is either getting in the way if you're getting access to some of the business support or there are just any issues that you're you're facing. I mean, obviously, at the moment, we're now all looking at um, what does the, the restart look like? What does that maybe mean for your business based on some of the guidance that maybe has come out from UK government and you know, for example, I was talking to another chamber chief exec today who's headed into their office to look at Perspex screens and how that they can think about um, adapting their office when and if we get that okay to reopen. So I know that a lot of people are thinking all of these issues through. Um, we've also been doing a lot of webinars. So we do four webinars in a week. We do we start our week with a, a coffee and a virtual cake for members to get together and network on a Tuesday afternoon. Tuesday evenings are our guide to series. So last night we had a great session which was looking at health and safety in the workplace and we had a good discussion as well at the end of that. But um, all of our YouTube um, videos are there for you to go and have a look at. So if that's something that is of interest to you, then I would urge you to go and have a look at that. Um, Wednesdays sees us look at business uh, people support rather than business support. So today's a really good example of that but we started off looking at mental health and well-being we've looked at motivation we've looked at managing people virtually all sorts of different things that that allow you to kind of think about the people around you or the people in your business and then on a thursday it's all about support for your business itself so what does the organization need at the moment what do you need coming out of all of this and um, so yeah lots and lots going on um and today is a is going to be a really interesting session. And um, for those of you that know me well, well, you know, I'm definitely couch potato rather than um, athlete type. So, <laughs> but if there's one thing I could do is put on a pair of trainers and get a bit of act, a bit of active um, participation going. So I'm really looking forward to um, today's session. Claire, I'm going to just hand over to you. I think that's kind of all you need from me today. Um, so if you unmute yourself and as soon as I can hear you, I will mute myself and get out of the way. Okay, that's me. Unmute myself. Perfect. You can pass me over. Go for it. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Claire. I um, have Temple Sports Therapies and I also have um, involvement with the Duncan Angus Chamber of Commerce as well. I'm a member of them. Um, and I appreciate the fact that they've got in touch with me to give you guys a little workout for today. Um, so I'm just going to put myself onto the full screen as I click on me and see the little corner. So I put the middle of the one, isn't it? How do I put myself onto the big screen again? I was listening, but my cat's also just thrown up at the same time, so I wasn't really <laughs> <laughs> so if you if, if you go to your own profile and select there's um three wee dots. Ah uh, yeah, hang on a second. And then you should be able to pin yourself as well. That's it, there we go. You got it. Um full screen for me. Uh, I think so. It's working. I'm used to using Zoom. I think that's what my problem is with this one. Sorry. So more actions. Show background effects, fill screen, show device settings, keypads. So down, see, see where you've got, and kind of bottom left-hand corner, you should have your name. Ah, hang on a second. I don't think I have that. Look. Yes. Ah, and I don't have that on me. I've got me in the bottom right corner and I've got everybody else. Look, I'm not sure participants. Click on me. It's coming up. Sorry, I'm really in it to these type of things. What actions? If we, Claire, the other way to do it is go to the participants list, you know, where you see all the lists down the, the side, and then you can click on yourself, and I think you can pin yourself through that list too. Yeah, let's have a look. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Show participants. There we go. It just comes up copy, that's what it comes up as. Yeah. I, mean, I can see you guys, so it's fine. As long as you can get a full picture of me, that's not too bad. 
Um, sorry about that, but also cats being sick as well, like massively distracting at the same time. Um, so what I want to do with you guys as well, because you're still working um, and you still have the same kind of effects of being at your desk. Basically, you're sitting hunched across, your shoulders are tight, your chest is tight, your neck gets sore in that as well. So it's just to kind of give you some exercises to open this up. Um, and then the idea of getting away from your desk for maybe 15, 20 minutes and doing some activating exercise, just to get your heart up a little bit, stretch yourself out. You'll be at work and you'll be going to the coffee machine, you'll be going to chat with your friends, you'll be walking a little bit in your office. You don't have the same ability to do that as much as you do at home, unless you kind of want to go down to the kitchen, get a coffee, or do something with the kids, or go to the garden, or whatever you've got. It doesn't seem to be the same. You kind of get out a bit of a routine that you would normally do, unless you've got a coffee machine and a water machine in your house that you can go and hang about with and then FaceTime your friends, that's fine. So um, I just wanted to give you something that you can kind of do in your own time um, and get yourself up and about and also then take that away from your working space as well use a small space that you have to then do some activities so at the moment I'm in my spare room it's not very big but this is where I do my workouts and um, if I can't get outside um, so I've got basically nothing at the moment I don't have any equipment just now so I'm going to show you how you can do a 20, 18 to 20 minute little heart rate exercise um, or exercise to get your heart rate up and just do very basic moves now obviously it's online I don't know the fitness of anybody so we're going to keep it very very simple and be quite basic as well and you can adapt it however you want to do when you just start doing this in yourself as well first of all though, I want to get us to open up our chest so I want you to get yourself in a position where you're nice and comfortable this is the type of stuff that you would do at your desk so first of all just get your ears up to your uh, shoulders up to your ears as much as you can Twist yourself back and then drop your shoulder blades as down as far as you can and do that three or four times. So lift up, roll the shoulders back and then squeeze your shoulders back down. So imagine, it has me jump up on here, imagine your shoulder blades are kind of squeezing up the back of your head, coming together and then you're dropping all the way down. So do that another three, four times for me. So squeeze up, roll the arms out and then press the shoulder blades back down again. So all the way up, roll them back, and then push them all the way back down again. Another couple of times, all the way up, shoulder blades right back, and then drop them all the way down. And hold that last one for a count of three. Just imagine your shoulder blades are getting pushed as far down as you can to the bottom of your back. So what we're doing is just taking the shoulders back a little bit. So if you've been sitting like this for a while, we're lifting up, and then we're dropping all the way back down again. And next one I wanna do, is um, to get your chin, and I want you just to, I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see a little bit easier, and then just kind of pull yourself all the way back. So imagine you're taking your head backwards over your body. Hold that for about three to five seconds. So the shoulders are nice and relaxed and they're backing down, and then take your chin and then take it all the way back as far as you can. And with this one, you should feel some stretches from the back of your head here to the top of your shoulder blades, and maybe a little bit further down. So as you take it back, you're just pushing your head backwards. So try and reach the wall that's behind you or the sofa or wherever you are, just really force that and move behind. You might find that your shoulders are coming forward, so push them back and then just relax it. So three or four times again. And then just relax it down. And you'll feel that stretch really gets into that. So what that one helps is if you kind of sit slouched at your computer, so your shoulders are forwards, your chin tends to be up and we're in this kind of position. So those first two moves have immediately made yourself sit up, rolled your shoulders back and you've tucked your chin in so you're in a more neutral position for that way. So if there's two exercises that I would recommend you do um, more regularly throughout your working day, that would be the two that you get. I give this one to clients quite a lot and the difference that this makes and it's something they could do really easily and the difference it's made to them is, is quite massive. They've not had any issues since they've started doing it. They've actually found that the stretches are not working so the stretches that are actually have worked it's just they're not tight anymore so those would be the two main ones that i would say to do quite a lot another one i want to do is some torso twists so we get quite up and tight in our kind of thoracic area which is the section so i want you to put your hands out in front and then first of all i want to take your right hand and i want you to take it as far back around as you can and then look over your fingers and then back to the front and then just do the same on the other side Take your hand behind you as far back as you can go. Look at your fingers behind you. Now, don't worry if you can't go all the way around. That's absolutely fine. People don't have a lot of upper body mobility. So I want you to do three or four times each side. Again, keep yourself nice and tall and upright. 
Your shoulders are going to be up, round and back and down. Keep your chin level quite high. And as you reach forward, give yourself a slight stretch forward as well. So look at your fingers at the front and then take it all the way around as far as you can. And then back. I'm sitting at this point, so I'm in my chair like you guys are. You can quite easily do that one standing up as well. So if you want to get up out your chair for these ones, you can absolutely do that. If you want to stay in your chair, you want to have a five minute break in between doing whatever it is you're doing at work. Nice and simple. Because again, we're in this rounded forward position, so we don't want to be too stuck or too tight. We want to make sure we're nice and upright and get ourselves moving. So hands again, as far back as you can. And then front, and make sure you're always following your fingertips all the way around. And again, on the last one, just hold the stretch when you count of five, count of 10, just to get that last little bit of movement out of it. So that's exercise number three. Um, exercise number four, before we go on to a little hearty one, is a move that we do, or that I do in yoga. And if you do um, yoga as well, you'll probably do this one. It's called child's pose. And again, it's one that I give quite a lot to my clients. It opens up the bottom of the back, Get some movement into the hips as well. And again, you can do this in your chair. You can stand up and do kind of your forward fold as well. So child's pose and forward fold is two. They're similar movements, but they can be adapted to working into your chair as well. So with clients, um, I get them to sit when they're with me, knees forward, feet nice and flat. And you're just going to sit yourself up and you're going to fall forward. And just going to rest your torso or your arms on your legs at the front. Depending on your mobility and how well you can move, you might need to then try and touch the floor with your fingertips or touch the floor with your hands. So I want you to just take yourselves nice and upright and then fall forward as far as you can go. Once you get forward, tuck your chin to your chest so you get a full stretch of your spine. And then once you've done that, slowly sit yourself up and be nice and tall again. And again, just do that three or four times. My cat's away to join in. I'm trying to stop her from jumping on the laptop. And then just fall forward and hold yourself in that position. If you find that stretch isn't doing enough for you, just stand yourself up. So take yourself in a position where your knees are slightly bent. From the hips, just fall forward and let your body be nice and heavy. And hang your arms down. So for this one, I'm feeling it in the bottom of my back and I'm also feeling it just in the top of my glutes where the bottom of your back connects with your hips. And take yourself forward. And when you come up, come up nice and slowly. Be nice and tall. And then just from the hips again, take yourself forward. With those moves, working in an office, these will be the areas that you'll get quite tight into your neck and your shoulders the middle and the lower part of your back. So incorporate these into your body, into your work day three or four times throughout your day. It doesn't even need to be a coffee break. If you're getting quite tight in your neck and shoulders, just sit, take your chin back, roll your shoulders up and back and down, do some twists. That will alleviate some tension that you have and some tightness you'll have into those areas as well. Um, and then once you kind of get into the hang of them, you can progress them a little bit more, hold the stretches for longer, adapt them ever so slightly to make them work for you. Because once you start getting used to that stretch, you won't actually feel it, so it's how you can progress it a little bit to just make it work feel a bit more. Okay, so keep up with those if you want to have any questions about them, you can fire at me at the end. Um, but what I want to do just now is I want us to get our heart rate up. So if you get yourself standing up, I'm going to move my chair out of the way. We don't need an awful lot of room for this. I have kept it quite basic because, as I said, I don't know everybody's fitness levels and I don't want to kind of kill you all <laughs> to start with. So we're going to do, it's about 18 minutes long, this one, and we are going to do three lots of exercises, or three groups of exercises. We're going to do them in 20 seconds of work with 10 seconds recovery, um, and then we're going to do it with a minute rest before we move on to the next set of two exercises. So we're going to do three sets of exercises all together. I've got a little timer here, so I'll do the timer for you. So give yourself some slightly room. The first exercise we're going to do is a front kick. So what I want you to do is try and touch your toes, if you can. If you can't touch your toes, touch your shin. If you can't do that, touch your knee. If you want, what you can do is just even touch the inside of your foot or even kick it up at the back. Whatever you can do is adaptable for you. That's what you're going to do. So don't worry about if you can't touch your toes. 
this exercise has so many different um, progressions and regressions to it, it's entirely up to you what you want to do with it. Um, and the second exercise for this little group is a side lunge. So nice and tall, take yourself out to the right and then back up. Doesn't matter how low you go, if you want to go right down and touch the ground, you can. So I'm out to the side lunge and touch the ground, you can. You can see my heart rate's already getting up, so it's working already. If you don't want to go that far, hands on the hips, slight tap to the side. If you want to make it a bit harder, even just putting your hands on your head makes your partial work muscles work out a little bit more. We'll take out to the side as well. Okay, so that's your first two exercises. Once we've done them, we'll have a minute break and I'll demonstrate the next set of exercises. So I will start the timer. Um, hopefully you guys will be able to hear that. Okay. So three, two, one, and we're doing front kicks. So either touch your toes. So my hands are up. They're coming down and touching the toes. If you can't touch your toes, you can touch your knees or your shin. So it's nice and steady. Three, two, one. First one done. So remember the second exercise, we're going to do some side lunges. So out to the side and back down. Do you want to go too deep? Three, two, one, off you go. If you want to take a bit further, touch the ground. Make sure the heels are staying down on the foot that's extending out. If you want to keep your hands on your hips, you can. You don't have to go that low as a half lunge. If you want to make it harder, open up the chest. Three, two, one. So that's your first set done. We're going to do that another four times, and that's your two exercises. So now you know them, you can advance them or regress them as you like. Three, two, one. Exercise. High kicks. If you want to add a bit of bounce, Absolutely, go for it. Get your heart up. If you just want to touch your knees, absolutely fine. Want to take your hands out, just bring your knees up. Very basic, you can feel the stretch in your lower back. Three, two, one, perfect. So 10 seconds, we're going to go back into our side lunges. Just keep yourself nice and upright. Try not to fall forward at the hips. Three, two, one, Exercise. off we go. So my hands are up in front. I'm not going too deep. If you have knee problems, ankle problems, you don't have to go that deep. You don't even have to go that wide. You could be a little bit quicker and do an even shorter side step. It's up to you. Three, two, one. And that's number two. How are we doing? That heart rate's up. Mine is definitely up. So we've got another set of this to do. So back into the high kicks. Three, two, one. Let's go. So full kick at this time if you can. You should be a bit more warmed up by now. Everything's starting to feel much more open and stretched. Again, if you want to add a bounce, if you want to take it down, you want to have your hands here. You've got plenty of variations. Three, two, one. Perfect. Back onto the side lunge again. So this time, if you want to try a bit different, hands up. It likes you, makes you up at all, and it's stopping from falling forward. Three, two, one. Off you go. So toe heel land as you come down, and then back into the middle. Toe heel land, back into the middle. So we're working the inside and outside the legs as well. Stomach muscles are nice and tight. Keep your balance. Three, two, one, perfect. Woo, I am sweaty already. How are we doing okay? So we're gonna go back into the high kick. So by this time we should start to be feeling a bit more tired. So if you want to do a full on ballistic version, you can. If you want to take it down, it's up to you. So toe touches, or to your shin, or to your knee, or you could do inside foot touches. If you want to get a bit more hip mobility, three, two, one. Play about with it, see what's comfortable for you. If you want to do a bit more ballistic stuff, or just take it down, perfect. Your heart rate is still going to be up. Three, two, one, back into your lunge. Off we go. So again, make it difficult. Keep your posture nice and tall. Hands up if you want to get down a little bit. Stretch out the back. As soon as you stump, come up nice and tall, then take it over. Three, two, one. We have got one more round in this set. Woo! Okay, get ready. So full on for this one as much as you can. Three, two, one. Off we go. 
Good stretch in the hamstrings and into the glutes. If you're still keeping it at a steady or lower level, awesome. Keep doing what's good for you. This is the workout for you, not anybody else. Your level is your best level. Three, two, one. Okay. We're going to do our side lunges one more time and then we get a one minute recovery. Three, two, one. Off you go. Don't stand on your pets as they are walking past. <laughs> the advantages of working out at home is you have kids and pets in the way as well. Okay. Three, two, one. Round one is done. Okay, grab yourselves a quick drink. So we have about a minute and 10 sections actually, so we've got a bit more than just a minute. So the second lot of exercises, we're gonna do a little bit more ballistic stuff, but again, I will show you how to regress it a little bit. So the first exercise in this lot is just a nice little jog. If you want to take it to high knees, you can. If you want to just keep it a jog, a jog. If you just want to rock from side to side, so all I'm doing now is keeping my toes on the floor and rocking onto my toes, but lifting up my heels. So this would be your basic level. Just a light jog, swing the arms, jogging on the spot, a bit more higher, high knees. So that's your options. The second one of this group, some twists. So to the side, to the side. Off we go, let's work the midsection. Again, if you don't want to do the ballistic stuff, keep yourself in a bit of a swivel, or just work your upper body. Entirely up to you, you've got the versions you want to use. So we're going to go into a jog, in three, two, one, off you go. So nice and light. So I'm doing a light jog on this one. So as I land down, my toe heels land, so I'm doing a full foot land, so toe heel, toe heel. Loosen up the arms, nice and light. So we're gradually building up again. Three, two, one, and rest. Perfect. So second extra exercise is your twists. So hips one way, upper body that's the other way. Toe heel land, so make sure you've got a good bend of the hips, bend of the knees, and as you land, your heels come down. If you don't want to do this, keep working with your hips forward, feet flat, and then just twist. This will still keep your heart rate working as well. So that's your two exercises, jogging on the spot, and your twist, okay. So that's our first round done, so that's always the easy one because we're working into it. Three, two, one, let's go. So this time I'm bringing my heels up a little bit at the back. So I'm putting a bit more into it. So I'm still toe heel land, but remember you can just keep it as if you're doing the fast walk that you see them doing in the Olympics. So my toes are grounded. Three, two, one, and recover. Shake out the legs. Hands up. We're going to do our twists. Three, two, one, off you go. So hips, torso, opposite ways. Nice and tight, always keep an engagement in the core. Knees are always bent on this one, okay? Keep it nice and light, work through the ankles. You don't have to go fully, you can stop on the jump. Three, two, one. So set number two done, we've got three left. So. Pick the versions you want to do, the high levels or the low levels, or in between. Three, two, one, let's go. So back into the jog. Woo! 10 seconds left. So if you want to increase it a little bit more towards the end, you can. Three, two, one. Good, shake out the legs. So your level of choice, high, low, in between, we're back onto the twists. Want to make it high, you can have your hands up. Three, two, one, off you go. Switch it up. Do what's good for you. Remember, this is your workout. Your version of these exercises count. It's your hardest level. Whatever you're doing, that's your 100%. Three, two, one. Okay. Doing good? Oh, back into the jog. Three, two, one, off we go. So by this time we should be feeling it 
your heart rate's properly up now. So you want to bring it down a little bit, you can. If you want to ramp it up and start to push it towards the end, absolutely. So I'm going to go into higher knees for me. So this would be your top end version. Three, two, one. Woo. Back into your twists. Shake out the legs. Okay, this is number eight coming up. Hands up. Three, two, one. Off we go. So I'm really forcing my hips and my torso the opposite direction. For me, I'm trying to get more of a stretch than anything else. My heels are landing. Three, two, one. Ooh, we've got one more set of these. And we're almost done. Okay, last jog. Three, two, one. Let's go. Come up to 10 seconds. That's us got our last. So we can push it a little bit more if you want to. It's the last time we're doing this one. Three, two, one. Woo! So twists are coming up for one more time. Oh, my heart rate is right up here. Three, two, one, off we go. So again, I'm forcing for the twist to get the stretch. If you want to keep it quite short and sharp, you can as well. Mix and match, play about with it. This is your workout. Three, two, one. Awesome, grab yourselves a drink. You've got one minute and seven seconds before I do our last set. Oh. Okay, so I like the best two to last. This is a bit more movement in the body, a bit more joints are working on this one. So we're going to do a squat touch. Feet together, and I'm going to do a squat jump. And you're going to touch the ground with one hand. Feet back together, touch the ground with the other hand. If you do want to jump down, hands on the hips, feet out, so like a half jump jack. The second exercise is a lunge. So one foot forward, one foot back, alternate feet. With this, I want you to land the front foot, heel toe, and the back foot be on the toes. Have your feet hip width apart. You don't have to go low. We don't want to touch the ground, you want to have a bit of speed. If you want to touch the ground, get a bit more depth and work a bit more muscle endurance, you can. But we want to keep the heart rate nice and high. Okay, so we're coming to seven seconds. So the first exercise is your squat touch. So again, I'll show you the variations on this one. So feet together, feet wide, touch the ground and back. Feet nice and wide, toe heel lands, touch the ground. My chest is up, so I'm looking right at you guys. If you don't want to go all the way down, hands on the hips, do a half jump. So think of a half jump jack. If you want to speed it up, go into that. So that's your choices. Second exercise is our lunge. So let's walk through it again. So I'm going to start with taking my legs, right leg forward, exercise. and heel toe line at the front, and then switch. Okay, I'm not going deep, but enough that my knee isn't going forward of my toes at the front. Using my arms to balance, as you can see, there we go. Three, two, one. Easiest version of that, we're going to be you're going to step back and forward, step back and forward. Okay, that's the two exercises. Squat touch. Three, two, one, let's go. So these are the two hardest ones. So right now, your heart rate should be really high. So here okay, lands. If you want to try and do these as fast as you can, that would be your optimal level. Your lower level will be taken out. Half jack. Three, two, one. Lunges. Woo! Feeling this one. Three, two, one. Off we go. So, so here land at the front. We're not going all the way down. Keep it short. If you want, you can step, touch back. Or you can take it forward. Option is yours. That is your variation. Okay, mix and match. So the next three sets, let's push it as best we can. Remember, it's your level, nobody else's. You're 100%. Three, two, one, squat touch. 
So let's get the ground if you can. Heel toe land, nice and tight in the stomach. Shoulders are up, keep the chin up. Try not to fall forward. Three, two, one. Woo, halfway guys. Oh my goodness. Okay, three, two, one, let's lunge. If you want to keep the head up, lock your fingers behind the head. Take it as wide as you can. Heel to land. But if you're getting tired, step back. Keep the hands up though, keep the ribs nice and open. Okay, this is good. Almost done. Three, two, one, let's go. Squat touch. Shoulders are up. If you still want to touch, you can go deep or take out the jump. Keep your feet nice and wide and touch the ground. You're going to squat. Again, make it what's good for you. Work through your level. Three, two, one. Do your exercise. Do what's good for you. Lunges. Can also miss section. Let's go. Three, two, one. Exercise. Yes. So that's actually quite short. But I'm keeping the speed up. I'm elevated with my ribs. Up because my hands are up. If I want to take it a little bit wider, I can. I'm working on the speed. Three, two, one. Okay, last round. And then we are done. Three, two, one, squat touch. Let's go, folks. You're 100%. Whatever's working for you, push through. Come on. Do your version. Your version is your best version. Let's go. Heel toe, head up. Three, two, one. One more. Lunges. I've got a proper sweat. This is good. Three, two, one. Okay, last 20 seconds. Final 10, let's go. Bring the arms in. I'm trying to push. Three, two, one. Okay, we've got one minute. So let's just stand here. Catch your breath, let's just shake out. So let's bring our heart rate down. You just want you to kind of toe touch. Bring your hands up, like an old school arose class. <laughs> Big deep breath in. And relax all the way back down. The last thing you want to do is have done something like this and immediately sit that down. You want to just bring that heart rate back down a little bit. 30 seconds. So just some heel touches now. Big deep breath in. Arms up. Just hold it at the top. And then big deep breath out. We don't want to go from our heart rate being up here to then dropping right back down quickly. We want to gradually bring it back down, especially if we're going to sit back down. So hands up again. Let's hold this breath at the top. And then breathe. Okay, three, two, one, and you're done. Victory, well done everybody. Grab yourself a drink. Shake yourself out a little bit. And that is us done for our exercise. Well done, I'm definitely feeling that. That's only 20 minutes. <laughs> but that's how simple it is to get your heart rate up with really basic exercises. I'm in my spare room. We use zero equipment. We use very simple exercises that we can build up, we can progress and we can regress them down. So it takes into consideration any injuries, back, knee, ankle, or how fit you are, or how fit you aren't. So nice and simple. I definitely got a sweat on anyway. <laughs> okay, we'll pass it back to you. <laughs> and the cat wasn't sick again, so that was fine. Nobody was stood on. <laughs> there we go. Wow, and that's it. I am feeling that. Thanks very much, Claire. I need to get my breath back before I do anything. I know, I'm really hot. This room catches the heat and it's also got the boiler behind it as well, so it's always really warm in this room. 
It's very, I know, I think, I mean, I've not had my heating on all day and, and just being within this room. It was, it was cold to begin with. It's certainly not cold anymore. Um, that's great. Thanks very much, Claire. That's um, <laughs> certainly worked, <laughs> worked up an appetite for lunch, to be honest. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, you know, everybody's been kind of working out, so there are there are no questions in the chat. Um, I guess one one question from me, you know, would, would you say a daily workout? three times a week, four times a week, what, you know, to, to get, I think like, get the most out of it. Yeah, to get the most out of it, if you're doing 20 minutes, 40 minutes a day, that's, you can do that every day, you can do that once, once a day, every day if you want to do it, it would be no more than maybe going out at lunchtime for your walk, if you're going to, to the city centre for your lunch or that as well, if you can keep it that you can maintain that kind of steady activity, if you're going to then start working out three or four times a day, because you have all the spare time, it then comes down to recovery of how you are the next day. So you would still compare it to having actual physical exercise in a gym setting or a team setting or that. So if you want to push yourself, you can work out in the morning or the evening. If you just want to do one of those a day, 20 minutes, a half an hour, high intensity, um, you could do that every day, really. It's something, it's nice and simple. It's, it's fairly light. It is, you do get your hurry up, but it's not going to, you know, put you into a, a line fetal position for 20 minutes afterwards unless you really want to break yourself. But with something like that, you can quite easily do that every day. Um, and because there was no body weight exercises into that as well, it's a simple way of working your heart. You can quite easily adapt that to doing body weight exercises. So more squats, press ups, if you have resistance bands, you can add them in as well. So I would still keep your activity between 40 and 60 minutes a day. If that's what you're used to doing, there's no reason to try and deviate from that. Um, if you are used to working, twi working out twice a day, maybe you do something in the morning, in the evening, if you're still sticking to that, Absolutely. It's the function of keeping routine as best you can when everybody's routine is completely messed up at the moment. Um, I had big plans of doing this and doing that because I'm so used to being so active, going from being 100% physical job, coaching, training to not doing that. Um, I found it's a big switch. So for me, I'll do a good solid 60 minutes, 70 minutes a day. Um, and that kind of keeps me on what I'm doing, which is not too unfamiliar to what I do. So it would depend upon your fitness levels and what your general daily activity has been anyway. Um, if it means you're actually able to do a little bit more and you've gone out and run a bit more than that and you're actually progressing to doing maybe a 5K instead of a 3K, or you're focusing more on body weight exercises, it's a good time to then just start to push yourself that little bit more within mm -hmm. what's comfortable for your limits, injury-wise, um, and what you have facility wise as well such as can you get into a garden can you get to a park do you have a spare room do you have any equipment so um do do your hour a day now that we can Scotland can do two hours a day um I would try and not then adapt to try and progress to do more if you can only fit in an hour fit in an hour don't start stressing about to try and get in extra stuff um because some people think oh I need to do this I'm not being as active mm -hmm. you're going to then stress yourself about more trying to be more active um, so stick with what fits into your routine, what your routine has been done um, and play about with stuff as well. Try various different things, try maybe some more yoga, some mobility stuff. Um, just do what's good for you as well. So, but you can quite easily work out every day um, and keep it within good limits. If you start doing three or four hours as your morning session a day, then that's going to be when you're going to start coming to difficulty for recovery because you're still pushing your body, you're still being active. Your body still needs that recovery and nutrition time as it would any kind of program that you're working with. Mm -hmm. Fab. <laughs> you obviously you showed quite a, a good few different variations of each of the exercises, which I think is really good for you know whether you're just starting off an exercise or whether you've not been able to, you know, you're a you're a gym buddy, but you've not been able to get to the gym for whatever reason. So yeah. for for those who are just kind of starting off doing a little bit of exercise and doing the the kind of lighter ones would you encourage them to move on to the next step or or would you just kind of encourage them just to kind of stick at that I guess what you know what their their body's able to do and what they're comfortable with or you know would would yeah. you in, encourage them you know after kind of two or three weeks to maybe try the next one up or Absolutely. Go with it. So if it's something you're going to be doing every day, so for example, if you did this for the next three or four days, by day four, you should be towards the higher end. So you should be able to maybe hopefully do a fuller extension, be able to touch your toes. So you should be able to do the jog. Um, and so just being kind of touching your toes and that as well. So it comes down to something that we called FETA, which is frequency, intensity, type, type and adherence. It's a very scientific term that we all use. The more you do something, the more your body adapts to it as well. 
So it's like if you were to practice doing press ups. I know people have been setting themselves goals. If you do a little bit every day, you will adapt and progress just a small bit. But by the end of, say, two weeks, you will definitely have progressed. So if you keep within your limits, um, you'll find that especially your heart rate, your heart rate will become easy to drop a lot quickly. And that's a good indication of fitness levels. If your heart rate can drop faster, it means you've got a better way of recovering. Your body's quicker at recovering that way as well. So keeping things quite level and quite at the basic ends, then just maybe do one of the sets a little bit higher and then come back down again. And then the, week, the day after that, do two sets a bit higher. Gradually build it up. I'm never going to go and do a 100-mile race because I've started running 5Ks again on Friday. I'm just going to build up a little bit at time. So just small increments of what you're doing and adding on to that will make a massive big difference in the long term as well. So And it also means that you'll stick to it as well. And that's the adherence part of it. If you're not enjoying it and if you're finding it's really difficult and you're struggling to get your heart up or whatever it is you're doing, just dial it back a little bit. It's like with anything. If you progress slower, you're going to progress slower lower but stronger and better and better at that action as well but if you try and do something really quickly so I'm going to go from here to here instead of all the small steps in between the small steps in between make you get to that session a lot quicker better and safer as well so smaller steps will get you to where you need to be as well so don't try thinking that you can immediately do in a thousand jump jacks and you only did two yesterday because no one likes doing that <laughs> so smaller steps keep it nice and simple small bursts push yourself a little bit and then pull it back and just have those little bursts mm -hmm. um, every other time and you'll progress a lot better that way as well. Yeah, it's now it's about adhering to stuff and enjoying it because as soon as you stop enjoying it, you're not going to do it and you're going to end up sitting on the sofa and watching TV. We want you to be able active um, for at least 45 minutes every day regardless of what it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. And always have water as well. That yeah. Was <laughs> Yeah, mistake I didn't have. I was like, oh no, I can't possibly go and get a glass of water because I don't have enough time to rush to the kitchen. <laughs> I I don't know if anybody does have any questions for Claire. Feel free to unmute yourself and yeah. come on in. Sarah, I have a question. I couldn't um, access the chat um, saying it's not available, so I know that happened before, so I don't know if maybe that's happened to a few other people as well. Okay, um, thanks, Linda. Yeah, um, thank you so much for that. Um, that was really good, really enjoyed it. Just before we started, I was thinking, oh, I'm so tired. I really can't be bothered doing this, but I actually feel much better now. So, um, yeah, I'm glad I did it. So thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask a quick question about kind of sitting all day and lower back problems. So yep. I've not had kind of major problems before, but I found like lower back is so sore sometimes just from sitting like not on a a proper chair and sitting at like the dining room table and uh -huh. I don't know if it's like posture or anything but I wonder if you had any tips for maybe stretches or anything for after or before sitting and um, that could help yeah. with that. You'll find as well that because your desk situation is slightly different from what you're used to at a workplace you've probably got yourself in a good position there and now you've had to change and sit something different. I would also make sure your chair situation is good as well so get some cushions behind your back or underneath that you're sitting on as well to kind of prop yourself up. And that should kind of give the middle section of your working day allow you to protect your back. Before and afterwards, um, so the stretch we did when we were sitting down and we just basically forward fold at our chairs quite a nice one. It's a very basic one, very simple. So if your back is really quite uncomfortable and sore, that's a good one to try and stretch off with. I do that one quite a lot um, just because of the, the stuff that I do, especially with the work that I do. My lower back tends to get really quite tight. So I'll find myself, I will sit in between clients and I'll forward fold and stretch off my back that way. Another one to do is just a nice simple one is lie on your back and pull your knees into your chest and just hold it there. Extend your right leg and then your left leg and just alternate that for a few times each side and just hold it in that position there. So lie on your back, knees into the chest and then just pull your knees into the chest and pull them into the middle as well so you can nice and close into your chest and that'll stretch them out. Alternate your legs that way. You can do about 10 times each time. Um, and then just hold the stretch at the end just to get that full bit of stretch at the end. Um, another one that is quite nice as well um, is child's pose. You do that in yoga. So you go onto your knees, have your feet together and your knees are apart. So you're kind of in like a fan position and then just allow yourself to stretch forward and have your hands out and tuck your chin in. It's a really nice one. It really elongates and opens up your back. But it also gets into the lower back and into the glutes. So people have got a quite sedentary job or find themselves sitting quite a while that's the area it gets quite tight. So a good forward fold, child's pose, or knees to the chest will open that one up. 
Um, and another one as well is back onto your back. So one knee in, and then we call it a supine twist. So bring the knee, so for example, if my right knee's up, my left leg's extended, and I drop that right knee over. It doesn't need to touch the ground. You don't have to try and force yourself to make a full twist. As long as you can get a full enough stretch that you can feel as comfortable for you and hold that long enough, and then just allow yourself to sit in that four or five breaths is always quite nice, and then back into the middle, and then switch sides again. And that just opens everything up as well. Um, and another one as well is to stand yourself up. Again, we did it at the start, it's just a forward fold. And if you find that your hamstrings are quite tight, really bend your knees, have a good bend in your knees and just let yourself fall forwards. Um, and with that one, I like to bring my chin to my chest. And as I do that, I get a full stretch. So all this skin and fascia from here that goes right down to my tailbone also gets a stretch as well. Okay, and those are probably the four um, four favourable ones that I do a lot with my clients as well. And even then, just do them three or four times throughout the day before your work. Have a break, do that during your work and do it afterwards. It does quite a big open up into your back as well. And it loosens everything off that you need to, especially if that lower back area um, gets right into that little section there. And if there's anything else you need, you can always fire me a message on Facebook or you can I'll get the email address out to you and I can send over more um, exercises for you that way as well. Brilliant. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Thanks, Linda. Uh, there's nothing else in the chat. I don't know if there's anybody else who's got any questions for Claire. I'm roasting. <laughs> Claire, I've got a, a question, and you covered it, I think, at the beginning. Um, but I was too busy thinking about myself and what I was going to, how I was going to get myself in position. Yeah. Um, what are you doing with people? Are you doing any regular online classes? I mean, I've seen you obviously on Instagram and elsewhere, like with your kettlebells bells and stuff. So uh -huh. that's one question. Like, what are you doing with people? But also, if people are used to going to the gym and, and using kind of different weights and other things, mm -hmm. but how could they do something like that at home so that they, they don't discover that they can only lift half what they were lifting when they go back to the gym? Yeah, that one is difficult because I'm, I'm finding that really hard at the moment as well. I try and adapt as much as I can with what I've got. Um, so, for example, I've got a kettlebell, I've got resistance bands, um, I've got an ab mat that I use, not like an actual roller, but it's a little bat that I can pre um, prepare my back and get comfortable with it and things like that as well. I just have to adapt as best I can. Um, it's going to be difficult because I'm going to have lost not a lot of the, the, the physical activity that I have, like the strength that I have. Um, but that will come back. Our bodies are very good at having muscle memory. And once we kind of engage those activities again, our body will remember that and our mind will switch on to our muscle fibers and activate that again. The best thing that I can say to do is to keep the muscles stimulated is body weight stuff. Um, because trying to do a press up for a lot of people is quite hard because you are pressing your body weight basically, especially if you're doing a full length one. So work into your body weight exercises as much as you can. That is actually quite tiring. It's very, very physical as well. You'll find that your technique will probably be quite floppy at the start. So one thing as Sarah was saying, can you do it every day? Yes, you can, but with that, I would recommend smaller amounts of more muscle weight stuff um, and maybe just kind of like we do smaller sets, so maybe three sets of 10 to 15, and I would then do a cardio day the next day and then maybe body weight the next day. Because if you start doing multiple reps or press-ups, you're going to give yourself like tendonitis. You're going to, you're overworking stuff that you wouldn't normally work. I mean, how many home workout injuries I've had in the last six weeks is ridiculous because I keep on, you know, I'm doing different challenges with my leg and that. So try and body weight stuff as much as you can. If you're lucky that you've managed to hire equipment from a gym, fantastic. If you've got kettlebells or dumbbells, absolutely use them. Get yourself into a habit of doing them three or four times a week and then mixing them in with your cardio and that as well. Um, it's difficult if you don't have the equipment to stimulate the muscle as you're used to. That is something that unless you have the equipment, you're not going to be able to replicate. Um, but body weight for your squats, press-ups, um, getting yourself some bottles of water, filling them up and doing exercises of that way, light stimulus as well. So strength stuff's going to go out the window. So your shorter rep range of four to five um, reps and six sets is going to go out the window. Unless you've got a big massive like water container like you have at work and you can lift that up. So you're going to work more in volume and more in repetitions or 15 to 20 repetitions in that as well. So you can still stimulate the muscle, but until we can get back to activities of lifting heavy weights, we're never going to get the fully um, amount of stimulation that we can get unless you are lucky that you've managed to hire some equipment from a gym or you've got like a home gym that you can already use in that as well. So press-ups, squats, 
um, tricep dips. Um, I'm going to be doing a home workout session for body weight stuff, and I'll stick it up online. You can try it out. Yeah, well, and I think that's that's kind of my next question, isn't it? It's what are you doing with your own online presence that folk can kind of dial into? And yeah. are you doing any live things or or mostly videos? I've had in the past. No, um, I have I have thought about it, but then when I check on, there's every other person is doing some kind of live session as well. So I think there is a little bit of overkill of that. Um, I've been doing quite a lot of stuff the same, so it's not you want to see me doing the same exercise <laughs> for the fourth time that week. Um, so I'll do some things that I find are quite easy to do, but also quite hard. So it, there's various levels that people can work through in that as well. And I think it's worthy to put out there, then I'll put it out for people to do. If people want me to do something, I'll happily do a program and stick it on there as well. Um, this week, I'm thinking of doing like body weight stuff, like you were saying, I want to do that one. A little cardio session like that, I want to put something out like that as well. Um, online sessions for consultations, I'm doing those as well. So I know that Arwa has been, um, she had a consultation um, when she went back home to, we were treating her carpal tunnel, so we've still been having consultations like that. So I'm still available for consultations as well. So whether it's fitness consultations or whether it's um, uh, rehab or therapy re consultations, I'm available for those as well. So even if it's just a chat about something fitness like we're doing just now, I'll quite happily, you know, set up a date and time that we could do stuff um, and talk about anything that you need. Um, do that okay. like Linda says that I've definitely seen loads of people on on Facebook and whatnot saying oh I've got a sore neck or yeah. you know I can't get my shoulders now really sore so yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm hoping that as much as um uh, yeah I'm hoping that people will need me and if that's I don't want people to be needing me but you know what I mean it is my employment it is my job um and like I say I've had so many home injuries <laughs> that I need to see somebody myself and um, so there is the risk of doing things like this and like um, I was saying to say that the more you're going to do something, the more you might end up causing an injury because you think you've got all this time. So you just want to keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. And you're going to be trying different stuff. You're going to be doing different things. You're doing lots of repetitions and your body doesn't necessarily enjoy that because it's not something you would necessarily do in your own workout. Like I would never do a thousand squats. You know what I mean? So it's just making sure that you kind of work within your limits. If your body's sore, have a rest. You know what I mean? It's just like you would not a normal kind of workout. If it hurts, don't do it type of thing. If you poke that bit and it's sore, don't poke it <laughs> type of thing as well. So, but yeah, I'm available for consultations, whether it be fitness stuff, whether it be therapy stuff. Um, if you want some advice on, uh, I don't know, whatever it is you want advice on, because I've got a fitness background as well as the rehab background and therapy backgrounds. I've got over 20 years of experience in both those areas. So I'm more than happy to share all that knowledge. Thank you. Thanks, Claire. Um, sorry, Paul's just put something. Uh, Paul, do you just want to jump in? I don't know if you can unmute yourself. Hello, guys. Hi, Paul. Hi, Claire. How are you getting on? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Fine. Uh, obviously, when I, I used to go to Claire for some of Claire's therapy, sports, massage and such, so... Uh, used to do some work on my knee, but my knee is dreadful right now, Claire. Any specific recommendation for anything to do with knee exercise? Is it the front or the back of the knee or the sides? Front. Front. Okay, so it feels just underneath the kneecap or in the kneecap? Oh, yep. Yeah, so I've been looking at doing some single leg work. So basically your lunges, like we did in the workout there, um, keep on doing nice and simple versions of that. So when I say a half lunge or a single lunge, you're not going to go as deep. You're going to work on the single leg stuff. So you're going to keep it nice and controlled. When it comes to knee things as well, a lot of the problem calls up from your hip into your glutes. So it's focused on keeping your glutes nice and tight as well, keeping your quads activated. So squeeze those, keep your glutes nice and tight and go into your lunge position. If you have any resistance bands, you can quite easily use them and you could do just single leg extensions. So wrap them around your foot and lock and anchor the other side onto like a table or a leg of a chair or something like that and just do single leg extensions as well. Um, and then just from that, figure out what the pain is like. Mm. If it increases because you're doing that, then don't do that. Um, but if you find doing something simple like as a lunge, a nice basic lunge, so you're not going all the way down, you're not going past 90 degrees and work with that and then adapt the variation of that as well. Try and get some stretches into your knee. So basically just pull your knee if you're sitting on the ground bend your knee and try and put your foot as close to your bum as you can and that's going to open up and stretch that area again if that hurts don't do that you have to try and find where the pain is altogether. if it's just general stiffness and tightness 
if it's lack of use, it could be the fact that you're not being as active and the muscles aren't engagement being active enough in as well. So when you do work out for working on your knees, it's the quads and the glutes need to be fully engaged. So feel like you're tensing your backside as tight as you can and then working that way as well. If it's a lot to do with the outside, it could be the fact that the muscles on the outside aren't as tight. So again, engage the glutes and we could do some kick out to the side. So some um, like the leg bumps and tums classes. So you're taking your foot to the side, engaging your, your glutes that way as well. Um, and likewise, it could be the muscles on the inside of the knee as well. So um, I could always chat to you later on at some point. We can have a proper good old chat about your knee and we could see what's going on with it. And um, also get your fingers in there as well and poke about and see what's going on and see what feels sore and feel what bits you're poking at and what really hurts. Okay. Is it the kneecap? Is it the tendons? Is it ligaments? Is it the muscles? So give yourself a good old poke about and see what's moving and what actually hurts it properly. But it could just be the fact that you're not being as active. So we just need to engage um, the muscles a little bit more. So, but again, it's one of these things and come have a good old proper chat and, and to find out what okay. is really going on as well. Sounds good. Cheers, man. No problem. Good to see you, Paul. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I'm conscious of time, Claire. Um, I think what we'll probably do is just kind of wrap it up and say massive, massive thank you to you, Claire, for getting us all moving. Um, I hope you didn't mind that probably all the cameras went off. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely fine. That's all right. No one sees jumping about anyway. I don't know if anybody else is like me, but I had to shut the blinds because the postie came. I was like, no, 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 nobody needs to see this. <laughs> the the, the, the postie came to the door. I was like, I can't, I'm busy. You have to go and leave it, give it to a neighbor or something. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you. Um, so, oh, um, remind us of um, what your kind of social media is. Is it is it the business name? Yeah, so you can check me out on Facebook, which is Simple Sports Therapies. I also have Instagram, which is Simple Sports Therapies, and they basically link up. So whatever goes on to Instagram will go on to Facebook. If you want to email me, you can email me at simplesportstherapy at gmail.com, and I will get back to you that way as well. But you can also direct message me on um, the Facebook page as well. And so that's the easiest ways to contact me for those ones. Perfect. Um, what Sarah will do is, um, as she always does, is make a great job of getting our video up on YouTube so everybody else can get a chance. And then when it's tomorrow and it's half past 12, then everybody just Absolutely. Gets to do it and does it again. <laughs> only come alive in a week, we feel now, from doing that 20 minutes. And that was only 20 minutes. That was, well, in total, 18 minutes of full high intensity workout and very simple moves. So there really isn't any excuses there for getting yourself moving. You know, Joe who? <laughs> <laughs> <Hey. laughs> I've got the Joe quick here. <laughs> all right. Well, um, thanks so much to everybody for um, joining in and to Sarah for getting us all organised and to Claire. Um, catch up with you soon. Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.